late to getting back into the game. Sorry about that. This is part two. Again, we're playing the Crazy 8 Tournament. I don't want to mention the name of the site. You can kind of see their logo if you want. Again, I'm not promoting any particular online site. I'm not pimping any classes. I'm not selling anything. Just providing some content. <clears throat> If you enjoy poker, if you enjoy watching poker, it's a cheap, deep stack tournament. Putting it on here for you at the Digital Poker Felt. Make sure to like the videos that I put up. Make sure to subscribe so that way you know when the next video comes out. Again, this being part two. And make sure to also, once you've subscribed, to join in into the conversations, the debates, start things going underneath in the discussion area. Again, being part two, I left you on a cliffhanger. I was telling a story about, I think it was last night at, was it last night or the night before? I was over at Derby Lane. Oh, by the way, I'm Fingers. Uh, that's my nickname. That's what a lot of people, even in my family, call me. Obviously not my legal name, although I've had some people in my past think that my parents were cruel. I'm Fingers. I live in the Tampa Bay area. So when I say Derby Lane, it is the closest poker room to where I reside here in South Tampa, and I can just jump on the bridge, race right over there. Was in a fairly deep stack tournament, great structure at Derby, made it down to the top 10 players. And so we were five and five. We were on the bubble before the last, uh, the final table. And again, just set it all up again. If you're just joining me for part two and you missed it in part one. Oh, what I have been doing quite a bit in this tournament though here. Let's get back into the min raising with these suited cards. Because again, we're still super deep. I had limped under the gun with King Jack off suit. Again, probably not GTO friendly, the whole limping thing. We're down to five. I should have probably raised. I was just trying to play super cautious. I wanted to see a flop. The guy on the button calls. The guy in the big blind calls. The guy in the big blind, my definition for him was ancient. Not just old, he was ancient. So, from the big blind, the flop comes out ace, jack, eight, rainbow. So I've got middle pair with my jack, my king jack. He shoves all in. I've got him covered. Button has me covered. So I ask them for a count. They count his stack for me. And for whatever reason, I decide to call knowing that I'm going to try and uh, it might be a little too much. I wanted to uh, hang on, trying to tell a story and focus on the hand at the same time. I knew that if the button shoved over top of me I was going to fold. I'd be sh super short stacked but I had a feeling that the button had an ace but I didn't think he had a strong enough ace to call an all in and a call. So I was pretty sure that even though my jacks were behind I could get the ace to lay down by me calling. Which is exactly what happened. The guy on the button went in the tank started whining and bitching. How could this guy, could he have gotten this straight? He was in the big blind. What would he have had? Well, we did check the flop. Uh, maybe I played a little too scared there. No. So... Big blind shoves all in, button, he's rambling and chattering to himself. Finally, he folds the ace, the weak ace, like I knew he had. The ancient guy turns up king 10. So he had shoved all in with a gut shot. 
I had my king jack. Sure enough, he hits his queen on the river. So this is kind of where the, the tournament went from that point on. When on break, when I came back, I'd just gotten it into my head. Because I, I had sent my, my one buddy a text saying, hey, we're down to 10, blah, blah, blah. And then, so obviously I bust out in 10th place. And when I'm texting him, I'm out in 10th, I'm leaving, blah, blah. Next day he's texting me, he goes, what happened? I, I got it into my head coming off of the break that I wasn't here to just cash. I'm playing to win. So the next time, maybe a couple times around that the, the blinds pass around, ancient guy again goes all in from some early position. I had ace-10 suited. I shove all in. He's got me covered at this point. He's got pocket nines. I got ace-10 suited. It's a race. My ace-10 does not improve, and I go home. But I'm fine with that. I I'm not telling the bad beat story like, oh, I'm not going Phil Hellmuth and getting angry. I think I played my hands properly. And, you know, it happens. These people that... Again, I try and watch my language on this channel. I don't know. After this is done recording, maybe I can go back and bleep it. But in my head, a lot of the nicknames I come up for a lot of these guys that get almost super angry. It's like this bitchy angry. I call them grumble fucks. Uh, what did he... He had the straight... There just seems to be so much of that, and I don't, I don't really get it because this whole whining and moaning crap. Are you trying to get into the head of the opponent to get them to play the proper game for you to beat them? Or they're not living up to your standards of how two cards should be played? They paid the same amount you did. They're allowed to play their hands. Whether they're suited hands or whether they're crap hands like this, they're allowed. And if somebody plays badly, why would you want to tell them how to play better? Do you think by getting them to play better, you have an even better chance of beating them? I should be happy that an ancient old man shoves in with a gut shot. Oh, speaking of ancient old men... And, and again, this is part of why the story's weird, is usually the older the guy, it's almost the more conservative they play, so they're not known for pulling off like these weird massive bluffs. But going back, I want to say close to, close to 20 years ago, I was playing at the Seminole Hard Rock in Tampa. This is back in the days when they had the one-table tournaments, the sit-and-goes. And there'd be like a massive line. You'd put your name on the list and they just had all these multiple sit and goes going all the time. And that was really how you made your money over there. Because back in those days, the Florida law, you were only allowed limit cash games, like one, two cash. So everybody was getting into the, what was it, 125, 250. And I forget what the number was for the tables more expensive than that uh, no matter how bad that is it's only a hundred more chips I'm wondering if he got moved or if he's the same guy as earlier now it has to be a different guy because the other guy had the ace jack note on This is why you shouldn't call it with crappy hands. Again, you got to be careful with bluffing with these guys again. They only see their own cards. He's betting over pot. Uh, I got a pair and a gut shot, but that's... no. 
for what I've what I was back then. Not as much now because I think more people have learned to hide their tells, and their physical um, attributes, whatever the signs are that their body is giving off of what hands. I think they've improved, but back in the 20 years ago, the the poker tells their their bodies were just leaking information. And I remember one of the sit and goes at the Seminole Hard Rock, where. I had raised with pocket queens and this other guy, again, being an elderly gentleman to the point where he looked well past his prime. I had raised, he called, he had position on me. The flop came out ace and I think two baby cards. I check it to him, and again, expecting an old man to play very conservatively. If he has the ace, he'll bet it. If he doesn't have the ace, he should check it. I check it to him, and he shoves all in. And I look over at him, and his body is screaming he doesn't have the ace. The tells were just ridiculous all over him. And now my mind's in conflict because, again, a guy his age shouldn't be pulling off a bluff like that, typically, stereotypically. But my eyes are telling me, you have the best hand, even though there's an ace out there. So sure enough, I call. I follow through on my read. He turns up king three offsuit. He had totally missed the board. So my read was right. He winds up getting a king on the river. He wins. But again, I'm relating it to the ancient guy with the, the gut shot last night over at Derby. Just these old men, sometimes they can pull the trigger on some weird-ass bluffs. But something about their bodies gives away the information. Let's see how many the blinds are up to what now? 200. Let's pull out the calculator. We're at 85,000. How many hundreds of big blinds do we have now? 425. That's still well above the charts. So the charts I have only go up to about 80 big blinds. Let's get back to min raising again. Maybe I'm being foolish doing this. Maybe I should be putting in real raises. But I think being this deep, let's just play around keeping the pots small. They want to super inflate it out of position. This is probably bad, but... Oh, I tried calling. Damn these things. They time out faster than I can look things up or think. Well, I guess I did the smart thing then. I meant to do the dumb thing. kind of setting to give me more of a time bank or something. Oh well. Just going to need to be faster.
I mean, I was probably lucky. I mean, definitely the ace kings, ace queens, pocket aces, pocket kings, queens, jacks, tens, nines. Uh, maybe not even nines from the small blind three betting like that. Unless my my small min raise is what's setting him off, thinking I'm weak. Like I said, that could be a possibility of me just doing that is causing me issues. Back to our suited hands. All right, since we have a limper in here, let's actually give it a real raise this time. Let's do 650. Come on, suited connector. We're actually getting enough callers where it's actually good for us. Everybody else called. Come on. Got a gut shot with a backdoor flush. Let's keep the pot small. Take back the initiative. I will peel one more card off. As long as he doesn't shove or re raise. Now, that's exactly what I did not want him to do. Oh, I guess I have to click on the time bank if I want to activate it. Whereas that other site kind of automatically kicks into it. What the heck? They're all calling with 2-5? He's got the 2-5. Ooh, quads. All right, blinds up two fifty. Well, if nothing else, I still have a deep stack and I'm instigating people to make a lot of mistakes around me. All right, we're down to 332 big blinds. to 20 minutes into this new video. Let me get rid of this message. Move the screen back up properly. Wait for it to do it to me again. Again, if you see any flaws to my thinking, the way I'm playing it, especially right now, not properly following the GTO, a sound off in the comments down below. 
main aim is everybody that subscribes becomes part of the digital poker felt tribe and we should all work together debating these hands learning from each other through my example or even your own if you have some hands similar to the ancient old men stories that I just told again I'm not looking forward to a bad beat story although those stories were kind of not necessarily bad beat I mean I made my sh fair share of errors I I should have probably raised you know and the, gotten it in with against the ace guy and probably busted out sooner what's going on with this why did that pop up oh all right sorry about that the screen went a little crazy there for a second why is this guy shoving that much in My ace deuce would have won too. Could have chopped it. Five tray, one of my favorite hands. Which reminds me, you know, how I was telling you the stories earlier about the ancient old men with their bluffs and stuff like that. Here's one for you. Um, this was at an underground poker tournament that would take place in a cigar bar years ago. Again, the same regulars once a week would show up. And talking about favorite hands, five tray being my favorite. I remember getting into a hand where I had, I think it was ace jack and again it's been so many years i don't remember if it was suited or not and there had been somebody had limped in i had raised get it heads up and the flop came out like with a king and a 10 and something like an eight or or a king and a queen and then and they ate something like that. There, there, there was big cards, Broadway type cards out there. Missed my hand, but they were big cards. The one guy that had called me pre flop, he goes, Oh, he goes, Oh, as he was calling me pre flop, he was calling me because he had his favorite hand. Well, he checks it to me on the flop, I bet it, and he shoves all in on me. Even though it's not suited, we're in that Broadway range. Let's increase it some. Uh, so I bet he shoves. And so even though there was a king and a queen and an eight or whatever it was out there that totally missed me, by him saying that he had called me preflop with his favorite hand, I snap called him with the ace jack. And he's like, he's like, good call. He's like, how'd you know to call me there? I said, because you told me pre-flop that you were calling me with your favorite hand. I go, nobody ever claims to have like pocket aces or kings or king queen or anything like that as their favorite hand. It's always these crappy weird ass hands. Uh, if I bet, I do not want to get raised, so let's check it. Now we've got the open ended. Could my queen high here be good? Could I get him to lay down a 10? All right, let's just look him up, see what he has. He has the straight. So no, if I'd raised there, I definitely do not think I could have gotten him to lay that down. But yeah, just getting back to it that I've never met anybody that their favorite hand was actually a good hand.
Now I have been raising with these suited aces. Let's try and keep the pot even smaller. I want to see a flop. <laughs> I guess not. Bully for you. There you go. Oh, but along those lines, as far as a verbal tell, kind of like the guy announcing that he had crappy cards pre-flop without even realizing he was saying that to me, at least my interpretation of it. Here's an instance where I knew the guy based on what he said, had pocket aces pre-flop. The unfortunate thing is that pre-flop I had pocket kings and my hand on the chips did not listen to my brain. It was a, this is going back years ago to Derby when they used to have over in the old poker room on the second floor, midsection of the building. Now it's a much nicer area over at the far end with the club and the bar and all that type of stuff. So this is going back many years ago. This guy, early position, shoved all in. The second guy looked at him and said, I'm sorry, and then shoved his chips in. That's when I'm the guy to act right after the I'm sorry guy. And that's when I looked down at Kings. I was like, what other hand would you apologize pre-flop with? Without seeing a flop, without seeing anything else. I was like, the guy has to have aces there. So my brain screaming aces. I looked down at the Kings. And the exact, he had me covered to the exact nickel the exact same size so as soon as I'm like you know how much is it the dealer announces it I look realize my stack is the the equivalent and my hand shoves my stack out sure enough the first guy moves all in was ace nine the second guy who said he was sorry had pocket aces and there I am with my kings so he manages to take two of us out because my brain and my hand did not communicate well back then Not, not that I'm saying that you should make it a habit to fold pocket kings pre-flop. It was just that one instance because of his verbalization, that, that verbal tell, just set it off for me that I knew exactly what he had and I was beat and I'm a dumbass and I, I still continue to call. All right, we're down to 80,000 now. Blinds are at 300. Let's reevaluate where we're at. We're still 266 big blinds. All right, let's goof around with our suited hands again. I can make a flush, I can make a straight, come on. <laughs> I can do neither with that board. One of the, 
I want to say more exciting things going on in my day today. And I don't know if this is really that exciting. I somehow accidentally decided to start getting healthy again. Like I was saying in part one of this video, I have gotten back on the Shantex, kicking the whole nicotine thing again. But for some reason, the, today when I woke up, I put on shorts. It's COVID 2020, everything was locked down and isolation and social distancing, all that type of stuff. Got out of the habit of going for walks, getting my steps in. And so today, for whatever reason I dreamed up, I decided to go out and my goal was to get in like 10,000 steps. I, you know, for somebody that's actually in shape, that's probably not that much. Maybe I should be aiming higher. I don't know. I thought that's like some good number. Let me just say, I did not make it. Again, I'm living in the Tampa Bay area. That's... Let's put in a smaller bet. Same way we would do if we were bluffing. So, what was it? A couple days ago, maybe mid last week, it had got for a Floridian. It, it had gotten cold. It was in the evening, getting down to like 40s and 50s. During the day, maybe 60s, 70s. Let's amp it up now. Again, if you're watching this video, listening to me, and you live up north, and you're going through some polar whatever vortex, oh, why did it have to be that card of all the cards? And I still win? What the hell? All right, well, today it was a normal floor today. It was not the polar vortex or whatever has been coming down. Uh, 400, 800, let's just make it a thousand. It was a normal floor today where it was up in the 80s and I decided to go for a walk exactly at noon. So with the sun beating down on me, I got in probably close to 5,000 steps, but nowhere near. Am I going to have to rebuy again? All right. Yep. Ooh, hold. Got lucky there. Well, at least we don't have to rebuy. And maybe I'm overplaying Jack because a couple of nights ago, not the one with the, the ancient guy over at Derby, but another night over at Derby. May, I still keep running this hand through my head, wondering if I overplayed it that there was a fairly big bet, a, a raise pre-flop, and it got around to me, I had pocket jacks. And with the size of my stack and everything, I decided to go with it. So I shove all in, everybody else folds, gets back to the original razor. And, well, I at least have the ace of spades. Like I was saying earlier, I don't think these players are bright enough to fear a blocker. Let's put out a bet. We definitely could have a seven from the big line. But the original Razor had queens, so it was queens versus jacks. And again, I was walking out the door.
Can this bluff work? Still representing the seven. Nope. Oh. He called me with Ace High himself. Wow. He made it 2,000 again. He made it 2,000. This guy's so short stacked, yet he's making some pretty big raises. Biting. If my six is good, then it'll be good to a check. I don't need to put more in there. Alright, so loose big bet guys in the big blind now. If it were to fold to me, he seems so bad. I want to get in a pot and isolate with him, but I don't know if my hand is strong enough. And he's got a super deep stack. Here's the guy I damaged earlier with my luck. I want to, but I'm afraid this guy's going to shove. So I'm not going to waste the 400. Yeah, not a shove, but still. Bigger than I wanted to play a 7 5 off suit. And this guy being so short stacked, what the hell's he doing? Well, there's the 7 5. So I would have been good against him. And I would have sucked out on the queens. I don't know how true that full statement is, but from my vision, that's what I've seen so far. I need to get better at taking notes, especially if these are anonymous players. We're all just numbers. Without the ace. That guy had to get there and he already had it.
All right, let's tighten up and not play this suited hand. Lines are only 500 and everybody's getting shove crazy. You already put too much in. There you go. Oh, a reminder, I was telling you earlier to make sure to subscribe, like, and do all the type of stuff that normal people tell you on YouTube. Also, we have a Facebook page going, a fan page, whatever you want to call it. Make sure to follow us and like us there. A number of, not just videos like this, or videos directing, or images directing you to videos over here on this channel, but we have a number of memes too that you know, just the funny stuff. So make sure to follow us there. That way, if there's any notifications outside of this channel, we can definitely let you know about it. Like, there is another horse tournament coming up. Again, I'm not being paid. This is not a paid endorsement. I'm getting no kickbacks, no, no compensation. There is another horse tournament coming up at Derby. The only reason I let you know is I enjoy playing those mixed type of games in a controlled tournament type limit setting and it's coming up again April let me look at the calendar real quick I believe it's April 6th but something like that I did put up an image where some of the people coordinating it yeah it's a Tuesday night 6 30 p.m. $200 buy-in so things like that that normally I'm not talking that much about it. I can't talk about that for an hour straight. And I'm not putting up an image here about it. There is an image with the details. And you could definitely go to Derby and look up more information. Okay, that's a raise under the gun. Offsuit, let's just play it safe, get out of the way. So again, hearing it now though, I mean, I still want you to go to Facebook and like and follow the page, but hearing this information, hopefully, maybe if you're into horse, you're into mixed games, you want to play, you're in the Tampa Bay area, maybe I'll see you there on April 6th because I definitely want to do it again. The very first horse tournament, not just for Tampa, I believe for all of Florida, took place earlier this month. It was myself and two other guys. We got down on the final table to the, the top three, and we decided to chop. It was getting, if I remember correctly, it was getting close to four in the morning. Two pair. He was racing with a weak ace in that position. That's good to know. What are my notes on him again? How do I open it again? Don't bluff. Okay. All right. Let's let's do twelve fifty. Two and a half times the big blind. Come on, you're gonna call. You call everything. It seems like. Again, don't bluff this guy. We got to remember that. They check to me rather fast. They'd be the ones more likely in that range. Let's just check it. Pot size control. And you're an idiot for betting that amount into that unless you have the nuts 
Because if they've got you crushed. Eh, he could have diamonds though. Let's take one off and see what happens. Eh, it just gets worse for me. Not even going to call another one. I can't wait to see these hands. Now he bets 2,000. That's still, what, 20%? Yeah, two pair. I didn't get to see what he had, damn it. Alright, let's continue our suited aces raise. Can't be too bad. What are our big lines now? Yeah, we're still well over 300 big blinds in our stack. <clears throat> we at least got a piece of this one. Could we do that bad move he did with the min bet? Let's try it. Let's see. It's a time for experimenting. What are we paying? Like $3 for this? So we're in for a total of six. <laughs> and everybody calls. two pair again. Let's see if he's playing suited hands. He could have queen five of diamonds. Maybe. makes sense. The raise and the min bets. Alright, I, I want to see it. Queen six. So I didn't have the two pair. Just gathering info. 3,000 chips worth of info. Everybody's starting to move over to the min bet. Min raise. Not him. He says, not on my watch. I got a button. He says, oh yeah, I think you're stealing from the button. I've got an ace. So therefore, I don't think you have an ace. He says, oh yeah, I've got a hand. Yep, he did. And he didn't even have an ace, he had a king.
Alright, I'm not even going to play this from the small blind, even though I'm getting a discount. I just want my button to get this hand over with. Somebody has a king-queen. Somebody with a flush draw. Now two pair and two pair. Way to go, both of you overplaying your two pairs. You got men raise? No. If it's cheap, I'm going to come on in with the connectors, even though they're not suited. Just because of him going that crazy with two pair. If I flop a monster, I might be able to double up again. There's only one card to come. That's fine. You take these little pots. Eventually, I want to get doubled up through you, sir. He's getting kind of short, though. I could definitely see him shoving, if not this hand, soon. What are my notes on him again? Loose big razor? No, let's get out of the way. Although... Okay, I lied. Let's limp and... If he shoves, we'll fold. <clears throat> Making it more enticing for this guy to shove. So many people in this pot. It's not min bet nor double min bet. Let's one eighth the size of the pot. Or no, now it's one tenth. Definitely cannot get a king to fold, but possibly a better ten. That's as far as I go, gentlemen. All right. That's where this video leaves off. Make sure to subscribe, uh, definitely because 
you want to know when part three comes out. I've been breaking these videos up into one hour segments, keeping it concise, bite size, keep the entertainment flowing. So again, subscribe so you know when part three hits the channel. And also smash on the like buttons and leave your comments down below. I appreciate it. Again, it's the Digital Poker Felt. Join the tribe by subscribing and come on back for part three and see how we do in the rest of this Crazy 8 Deep Stack Tournament. Thanks.